Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I am a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the configuring load balancing learning byte. All right, so let's go ahead and jump to the example. Here in the example, we have a few different items I want to talk about. First, we have the user at the bottom of the diagram who is connecting into VSRX1 on Gigi001. And then we have VSRX1 who has two connections to the internet. There is Gigi000 and Gigi003. Now, what we want to do is we want to load balance user traffic between the two internet connections. And so we need to do a few different things. We need to first configure the default static route that has two next hops. And these two next hops have to be equal cost. And then we need to configure a load balancing policy and apply that load balancing policy to the forwarding table. And then after that, we're going to examine the forwarding table to verify that load balancing is actually going to happen. And we'll actually look at that forwarding table before we configure load balancing in this manner to show the difference of before and after. So let's go ahead and jump to the CLI of VSRX1. All right, here is VSRX1. Let's go ahead and jump into configuration mode. And well, first, let's look at the forwarding table. And I'm going to scroll up here. So we can see this better. And here we can see that there is a default route specified. You can see that where it says destination default. However, note that it's set to type of reject. So there's no actual default route configured. So let's go ahead and configure things. And we'll jump first to the routing options where we are going to configure a static default route. And then we need to configure the other hop, which is going to be 12. If we type this, 12.12.2. So here are our two next hops. And note how there's not a preference value assigned to either of these. We could do a qualified next hop if we wanted one next hop to be more preferred over the other, but we don't want that. We want just the default preference, which will be five for a static route assigned to both next hops. So let's go ahead and just commit that configuration first and see how that changes things. So let's look at the route table. We can see here in the route table, actually I'll do a, just for the default route exactly. And so you can see in here that there are two next hops. If you look at the route table closely, you can see that one hop is selected over the other. And that's just as far as the routing table views it. Now, if we look at the forwarding table, and I'll have to scroll up here, we can see here in the forwarding table that we do have a default next hop, a default route, which is using that Gigi00 interface. Now, that is the next hop that is selected in the route table, but we aren't doing any form of load balancing across those two interfaces. So that's kind of a problem. And we're going to solve that here shortly. And what we are going to do is we're going to configure a load balancing policy and apply it to the forwarding table. If this is just a standard routing policy that we would configure, we're going to call this uh, load balance. Uh, well, we'll call this load balance LB for learning byte. And then we need to set what's going to happen. We're going to say set then, because we're going to apply this to all traffic. Then we need to say load balance. Now we do a question mark here. There's a few different things we can configure. We can configure some sort of a hash. And so that gives a prefix consistent load balancing with the hash, but we're not going to worry about that. But the other option says per packet. And this might seem a little strange because you think of per packet, most people are going to think that this means that we're going to load balance on every single packet. So if, you know, in our example, if our user is sending traffic to the internet, say that they are opening a web page, then every single packet of that session is going to be load balanced between the two interfaces. And that is not the case. I repeat, that is not the case that happens. What it does is it looks at the packet. It bases it on the parameters in the packet. For example, if we're sending it traffic from the user, then it's going to consistently use one interface. And so, you know, and that works well because typically you're going to have a lot more than just one user in your network. And so some users will use one interface for a session. A different user will use a different interface for a different session. And you might have one user that for, say, they open a web page and it uses one interface for that web session. And then they open an FTP session with a different server on the internet and it will use the other interface. 
So keep that in mind, it will load balance, it says per packet, but that more means that it looks at the actual packet and it doesn't load balance on every single packet. It more load balances on the session. And this is important because if we were to have it load balance on every single packet, so if user one was opening a web page to a server and we were load balancing every single packet of that session, then we're gonna run into the problem of out of order packets and we definitely want to avoid that. So this is gonna load balance more on the session, not for the packet, but we're gonna look at the packet for the actual information. And so after that, we need to apply that to the forwarding table, and that's gonna be back under routing options. We're gonna say set forwarding table, export, and we're gonna reference the policy. So that's what it's going to look like. We have a default route, two next hops, we have a forwarding table, export policy, that has that load balance per packet statement. And so let's go ahead and commit the configuration. Now, one thing I do want to note here is that, yes, we are working on a VSRX device, but this configuration is going to be the same, whether it's a VSRX, hardware SRX, an MX, uh, or anything else that you're going to be able to configure routing on as far as Junos-related products. And so let's go ahead and look at the route table, first of all. And you might notice nothing's changed here. And that's expected. We don't expect anything to change right here. And so let's look at the forwarding table. This is where we will see the biggest difference. Okay, let me scroll up so you can see what's happening here. So we look at the default route. The default route now, instead of showing one next stop, it shows two next stops. We see for the next stop, it shows the MAC address of the next stop. See, it's a type unicast route. And we see that under net if, which is for the network interface, we can see that we're using both the Gigi 000 and Gigi 003 interfaces. So here we have a default route that even though it shows in the routing table that it's gonna be using one hop, the forwarding table shows that we are using both hops here. So both interfaces, that's what we want to happen. So sessions coming from the user network are going to be load balanced over these two interfaces. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we discussed how to configure load balancing using the CLI, and we also demonstrated how to verify load balancing. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.